He's wearing his harness. We're going to see how well he does in this harness. Um, he has an issue with things going over his head. So what I like about this harness is it comes from underneath and it snaps up behind his shoulder blades, as you can see. So do four and then four. So we're going to go two different walks, um, one with the, the bigger dogs and one with the smaller dogs, and we'll see how it goes. One of, one of the things that I do um, when I'm working with a dog that has a tendency to pull is I like to loop the leashes around the back of my leg and that way my arms can relax while if he chooses to try to bolt out um, it'll do the work for me and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about so take a look. What I try really hard not to do and I um, it makes a big difference uh, for you pet parents who who have dogs that kind of want to do their own thing on a walk is an analogy I used to use is I call it just drive the bus don't worry about your passengers let your passengers relax because you're focused on your task at hand, which is driving the bus down the road. If you're always looking back at your passengers, you're probably gonna crash. And what happens when you're paying more attention to what they're doing than what you're doing is you're, without realizing it, you're, you're it, it's like they don't trust what you're doing and have confidence in what you're doing because you're not worried about what you're doing. And so energy wise, it definitely makes a difference. So when I'm walking, I am focused on what I'm doing and where I'm going. Maybe I'm thinking about what I'm making for dinner tonight, I don't know, but I'm completely relaxed. Because the idea of trying to yank them back, yank them back, yank them back, is it becomes a never ending game of tug of war. And I promise you, you will never win that game. There we go. Okay.